We've attempted Mario 64 DS without Mario, New Super Mario Bros with only feet, Sonic Heroes without Sonic, and even maxing out the coin count in a cursed Lego figure. All of these stupid challenges have led to this moment. Mario 64, elbows only. Okay, so the only feasible way to do this challenge is with a DDR pad. But how on earth is this going to work? Well, the arrows will be mapped to the joystick, circle will be the A button, X will be the Z button, and triangle the B button. Square and select are going to change depending on which inputs I need. The rules are to only use my elbows and to beat the game. And if you think I'm joking, well... I had a camera on me the entire time. Now, normally when I'm going through these challenges, I very briefly touch on the easy levels and dig into the ones I struggled with. This is the first and maybe only time that I can safely say that every star was difficult. Just look at me trying to walk. Moving around is quite literally a workout. At first, I was feeling pretty good and thought I could knock out about 40 stars in a day. <laughs> oh, I was so naive. When I landed in Bobo and Battlefield, I realized that I didn't know what I even wanted to start with. I'm basically limited to using two slow inputs at a time, so that doesn't leave me with any easy options. Like, look at this, I fell off the bridge. This is when it really sank in how absurdly hard this was going to be. I can't even walk over a basic bridge. Basic turning is an obstacle. Getting around small ledges was almost a puzzle. And worse, my knees were already starting to hurt. This isn't a good sign considering I don't even have one star yet. So guess how I had to get to King Bobo? I used the warp and the flowers to bypass the bridge. I'm not even kidding. Once I got up to the king, I thought he would be harder, but I found that by doing big circles, I always had enough time to grab his back and chucked him three times. That was one star! <laughs> uh, just one star. Next, I ended up losing to the Koopa race, and after taking a death, I realized that I was already experiencing neck pain because I was looking up at the game while my body was parallel to the ground. This was also tiring on my abs and legs since I was keeping my whole body up with just my elbows, but I'm not giving up that easily. So I did the Koopa race again and ended up winning, and only because I could use both of the teleporters. Star 3 was much more manageable, but even just getting to the cannon was tricky. I jumped and had to quickly swing to the right before falling off of it. I have almost no sense of control. Simply moving takes so much energy and extra thinking. Then came my great idea of getting the red coins. But that was just an idea, I was dreading the thought, so I tried getting the Chain Chomp star as a backup. That was a worse idea, because I couldn't line myself up with the pole fast enough. Playing this game with your elbows feels like Mario is moving 10 times slower, but everyone else is at normal speed. My reaction times just weren't good enough. So back to the red coins I went. My first try wasn't going well, as I missed this one on this hill. And when I hit the boulder by accident, I felt completely defeated with my three measly stars. I was able to get the red coins on the next try, but it took a really long time. I was legit out of breath by the end because of how much moving around I had to do. I felt like I was doing a really bad playing for 20 minutes straight. That was enough Bob on Battlefield. I didn't even want to think about that stage again. Cool Cool Mountain was next, and I wasn't sure how to tackle the slide at first. Since I'm used to having such a wide range of motion, I just held down and went as slow as possible. That ended up... Uh, not working. So I tried again and just pushed left and right. I phased into the secret area so I could rest my elbows and back for a minute. And guess who hit save and exit? Oh, yay. This wasn't the first time this happened. And that's because my knees kept slipping on the down arrow whenever I leaned over the pad, therefore causing me to hit save and exit. The next star was Baby Penguin. And wait a minute, where are you going? Come on, man, get off of the freaking hill. Anyway, I had been playing for roughly 30 minutes, so I was starting to get a little bit better with the movement. It was time to start attempting speedrun strats. I took the shortcut down half of the mountain, no problem. The next challenge was clearing this massive jump. Oh. Oh. So much for that. On the next try, I got the jump, and honestly, it felt pretty good. Well, maybe I should say my soul felt good. The elbows, uh, not so much. Then I went for the star six skip because it didn't seem that hard, until I tried it, and it didn't go as planned. So fine, I jumped to an easier spot and tried again. Nope, nope, nah, eh, 
Aha, that's the one. And with this star, I learned something really insightful. Wall jumping sucks. Jumping off the wall itself is fine. It's carrying your momentum afterwards that's the problem. So backflip it is, at least for the first part. I managed to hit the triple wall jump perfectly, except I didn't have the right angle. My only choice now was the green wall. And after 10 tries, I somehow jumped to safety. I was so paranoid about falling that I actually crawled the entire way there. As much as I hated the idea, I figured red coins would be my next choice. It was gonna be grueling and long like it was in Bob on Battlefield, but also doable unlike a lot of these stars. Not only was there a lot of scary jumps to do, but I I also died three times after getting all the red coins. The real challenge here was actually getting to the star. Normally I just long jump across the broken bridge, but there's no way I can build enough speed to do that. So my only other option was to very carefully jump towards the other side, and this took several tries. After grabbing the star, I told myself, uh-uh-uh, no more red coins. <laughs> oh yeah, I wish. So status update while I run through Bowser 1, my elbows were getting really raw and dried out. Hitting the pads didn't hurt that much, it was when I took a break and the blood rushed back in. And then there was Bowser. This was not the same as the King bob -um fight. Bowser spins much faster and grabbing his tail takes much more effort. Once I actually did grab it, I knew I couldn't spin around normally since my elbows can't move that fast. I resorted to the weenie method of just mashing B. This method should work up until the final Bowser, if I ever get there that is. While I was taking a break from the Bowser fight, my neck was starting to strain when I just moved it around. I don't think I'm getting 40 stars today. I'll be happy if I even reach 20. I went for the slide star next, and uh, no, I'm not gonna bother getting the secret one under 21 seconds. After that, I thought Aquarium would be easy enough. And yes, it is technically easy, but it is also excruciatingly painful on my right elbow. The only way to swim accurately is to hold A, so I held most of my body weight on my elbow while also using my left elbow to aim. Look how pink my elbows are now. I mean, maybe you can't tell that much, but it was getting really bad. Then Jolly Roger Bay was next. And again, it wasn't hard, but it just hurt like crazy. I decided to do the chest star because I had to get out of the water. The wing cap star also opened up and ha ha ha, of course I'm gonna get the reds. With my elbows, yeah, you're a real funny guy if you think that. Really, really comedy, 100. I was kind of over Jolly Roger Bay already, so I went to Womp's Fortress. Oh no, narrow walkways are my weakness. And of course, the camera is positioned just wrong enough that I can't quickly scurry across this path. I tried again and barely grabbed the ledge. Now like King bob -um, I thought the big womp would be an issue, but I was actually able to time the ground pounds and still pound him like normal. 12 stars in, and I'm at a breaking point of taking breaks every two to three stars. My neck was now in agonizing pain, and it just kept getting worse and worse. So of course, it's time to go for cannonless, right? I needed to remap a couple buttons since you have to move the camera around, but it's technically possible. And there you have it. It goes to show how consistent this trick is. I was feeling pretty good after that. So instead of being scared of the bridge, I just triple jump my way across and barely survive. Like seriously, what? how did I even, how did I not fall? I was going for star two at the top of the fortress and this one is gonna be hard since it requires a lot of quick turning to climb up. This is a perfect example of how hard these controls are. Up and right is tricky to do well. So it's better to take turns with one direction at a time. I did eventually figure out that the camera kind of moves with Mario, so if you're at the right angle, you can simply jump forward and climb your way up. I can't believe I'm doing this, but I'm actually gonna use the cannon for Star 3 in Womps. That's because my elbows are getting extremely raw since I keep rubbing my elbows across the dance pad. Aiming the cannon right took a while, but it was the easiest way to get the star. I figured I could do one more star in Womps, and that of course was the owl one. And I actually got it on the first try. This was shockingly the easiest star 
star I've done today. I dried up all the stars I could do in Womps, so next was Big Goose Haunt. Something I learned about this stage is I don't like ground pounds. I have to apply a lot of pressure on my right and left elbows really quickly, and that is not fun to do multiple times to kill the booze. I also had this bizarre ground pound in which I hit him, but also managed to fall into the water. That'll never happen again. The boss fight was a pain because I kept timing the ground pounds wrong. And it's not that I don't know the timing, I was just so exhausted from playing this that I wasn't doing the timing right. At this point, I'm about 5 hours into playing, and on top of my elbows and neck in scorching pain, now my shoulders are feeling a burn. I've realized that 40 stars today are definitely unfeasible, so I was just gonna do 23 stars since that's roughly a third of what I need to do. Up next was the Boo Merry-Go-Round star. Despite the pain of ground pounding, I was getting more efficient with the boos. Next was the Haunted Library star, and I accidentally hit the wrong book. At this point, I was in a bit of a bad mood and just wanted a hot bath or something, so I was playing pretty sloppily. Reluctantly, I also decided to go for red coins again. If a star was possible, I kind of had to get it, since so many of the stars would be basically undoable. I hated jumping for this coin in particular because the camera angle was so awkward. I would have raged if I fell down. I was done with Boo's Haunt, so to the basement I went. Walking through the door, I remembered that Mips was going to be actually really hard to grab. He moves friskily and requires decent movement and timing. The only thing I could think of doing was grabbing him with the punch, but I just couldn't get the timing right, if that even works. But for some reason, I felt this need to keep going for Mips, and the more I missed and more I tried, the more inevitable it became that I wasn't getting his star. So give up I did. I wanted to finish the day with Lethal Lava Land, and I had an idea that involved the wing cap. While I couldn't fly very easily, moving left and right was at least feasible, and this made for safer travel across the lava. So I started with getting the reds since they're all in the same location and that actually wasn't too bad. Two stars to go. My body was screaming at me in pain, but my mind knew that we were almost there. Next up was the big bully. This was also extremely hard since I had to react quickly for jumping as well as moving. After several tries, I finally got a good hit on him and knocked him into the lava. The log star was more of the same thing. Just fly really carefully and make sure I land in the right spots. And I think I got some sort of boost off this bully, but either way, I managed to get the star here and I was done done for the day. Man, I just felt so beat. I actually went straight to bed after this. I awoke after a restless night. Six hours of sleep and I was stretching to get out of bed, and everything was sore. It felt like I had worked out for two hours the day before, but this was just from playing Mario 64 with my elbows. I brought down a pillow today because my knees needed some form of comfort. As soon as I started playing, everything was immensely sore. You know that feeling when you know you shouldn't be doing something but you do it anyway? That's what I was going through. It took forever to get one star. And after that, I knew it was time for a new setup. This was no longer about beating the game. This was about survival. So to change things up, I decided to try putting the dance pad on half of my desk. I had to take off some things, including my TV, and lucky enough, the dance pad actually fits. This will hopefully help ease my back, shoulder, and neck pain since I won't be putting as much pressure on them. I also added two towels underneath to help the pad from slipping, and for some comfort on my elbows. Within the first minute, I was feeling much better about this setup. The pain in my elbows, shoulders, and neck were almost completely relieved. My back still hurt since I had to lean over so much, but this was so much better. I could see a light at the end of this dark tunnel. Hazy Maze Cave was my next challenge. Even though I was more comfortable, I didn't intend on taking that left route because long jumping was still almost impossible to do. At the very least, moving around was easier since I was using less muscles to move my elbows. Wall jumping for star 6 was really easy because the walls were close together. It was a good break. And speaking of a break, I was finally at the point of getting one of the Toad Stars. And man, it felt incredible taking 5 seconds to get a star over 10 to 20 minutes. I was feeling really good, so I was making some more risky plays. I wanted to get star 
one to start, but it took a couple minutes to get on Dory's back. Otherwise, this one wasn't too bad. Next was the Toxic Maze. I was a little worried since my movement was so slow, and my damage was gonna drain if I didn't move fast. In fact, I almost died in the maze. I got down to one sliver of health and managed to survive somehow. Star 4 definitely felt like a reward after that. And Star 5 was a weird one since I haven't used these girders to get the star in literal years. Now, there's actually not much to say about Shifting Sandland aside from I got Star 1, Star 2, and even Star 3. I thought climbing the pyramid would be horrible, but the camera for the most part moved with me instead of against me. Also, a Koopa shell was available. Otherwise, this level would have been more of a restriction with all this instant death quicksand. With my raging new confidence, I went for Mips again, and like last time, there was no way I was grabbing him. Even being more comfortable, using two inputs at a time is such a massive drawback. So dire dire docks, here we come! Swimming is still really uncomfortable, but at least this is the last major water level I have to worry about. For a joke, I went for the speedrun strat to get star 1, and that joke turned into something I actually did. I won't complain about that. Next was the chest star. This wasn't too bad either. Well, besides the wall sending me to the ground, that was pretty irritating. Bowser 2 was on the to-do list, and I was not looking forward to it. There's so many places where I can make one mistake and just die completely. Since red coins weren't in the worst spots, I also went for those since I'm still skipping a lot of stars. Now, I I've been playing for about an hour, and the back pain was unfortunately starting to set in. That's definitely not good, seeing as I need to get at least 46 stars today, if not more. The seventh red coin was just kind of luck. There's no way I could be more precise with grabbing it while avoiding lava. But the red coins I did collect, and the trouble really began with just getting the star. Double jumping up to this wall didn't work, and neither did triple jumps. With careful timing, I pulled off a side flip and grabbed the ledge. I've been avoiding side flips because the aim is so finicky normally, but I managed to get the star. And now, on to the chunky monkey himself. This didn't go nearly as well as the first Bowser because he kept teleporting all over the map. Like last time, it came down to waiting for him to stop moving. Five minutes of spamming B later, I nabbed the second key. Even with all this success, the back pain was really starting to get to me, and I went to Dire Dire Docks for one more star, the red coins. And worse, I was getting moody again and even a little angry. This concoction was making me play really poorly, which is why it's best to play these challenges as patiently as possible. If you're not not thinking straight, you're going to overcompensate what you're doing and play worse as a result. So it took me almost 30 minutes to get the red coins. The main problem was just getting to them. The box timer was really strict and I couldn't make too many mistakes. Falling into the water was like getting my soul executed. It was absolutely devastating. After getting the red coins, I was completely over Dire Dire Docks. The Vanish Cap Reds were, uh, they were something else. Sliding down could only be done by moving really slowly or ground pounding in the air. Otherwise, I'd fall into the darkness. After a few failed attempts, I found that the last four red coins were easier, despite there being more moving pieces. I also went back to Hazy Maze Cave since I forgot about the Metal Cap Reds, seeing as those aren't very challenging either. I didn't want to go back to Dire Dire Dogs, but the Cage Star is also really easy, so I went for that one too. And finally, I'm heading upstairs, and the first thing I did was talk to Toad. My back is ready for a break, but I have to keep going. I went to Tall Tall Mountain, only to later realize this was going to suck just as much as Dire Dire Docks, if not more. That's because the jumps I have to make are much, much larger than before, even this one right here. It took me about 20 tries before I made the leap, and then I realized that the log would also be unusable since I wouldn't be able to react to the rolling. My only option for traveling was with the Fly Guy, so I got the Lonely Mushroom Star to start, but that meant hitting the Fly Guy again and climbing up again which both of those weren't very fun. After probably, I don't know, 50 tries, I barely snagged the edge of this platform. And I'll tell you what, I am not doing that again. This stage sucks so much more than I thought it would. Oh, but it gets better, guys. There's no way I can reach this gray part of this mountain, which basically traps me here. So my only option now was to double jump to star five, and wow, it actually worked. Okay, only one more in Tall Tall Mountain and I'll be done. 
and that's the red coins. The jumps across the mushrooms were really scary, and so was climbing up, but this took significantly less time than the other stars. I decided on Tiny Huge Island next, simply because this was going to be tricky and wanted to get it out of the way. Right away, the plant's flames were giving me trouble, but I got star one without many issues. I was mentally in a phase where the back pain was so bad that I wasn't even feeling it anymore. I just looked at that star number and kept repeating to myself 50, 50. 50. After 10 minutes, I got the last secret for star 4, and walked all the way around the island for star 2. I shook up the wiggler for star 6, grabbed the reds for star 5, smashed the box for star 1 and went dry world, climbed to the tip for star 2, and... Wait, that's it. I got 51 stars! Oh, thank god. I can take a moment to rest. Finally. I awoke once again. My back this morning was feeling pretty good, but I wanted to be sure that I would be okay to finish. So I didn't start until later in the day and gave myself a full 15 hours to relax. When I did begin, something felt different. I only had 19 stars to go. A different energy was enveloping from within. It was time to complete one of the most physically demanding challenges I may ever do. It was time to play the game. There it is, 70 stars. My back was sore, but the adrenaline had kicked the f in and I was ready to win the game. I was ignoring the red coins this time. This was all about Bowser. When I entered the final pipe, I felt this massive rush pass through my bodies. Three long days of this was about to come to an end. I wouldn't be able to throw Bowser at bombs with noob strats. I actually had to spin and do this normally. And thankfully, there is a way to spin without spinning the joystick. By holding C right or C left and mashing left or down, the camera will spin, which also forces Bowser to spin. That's right, I have to throw completely completely blind three times with my elbows. At first, I was shaking one of my elbows to try to mash a button, later finding out I didn't have to do that. And after several missed throws, BOOM! The first hit is done. This next throw was not going well. In fact, I had to take a couple breaks just to rest my arms. I was getting so exhausted from this. I kept missing just because of how difficult it was to aim. Like I said, I'm basically throwing blind. Several minutes later, and now my health was down to one sliver, but I was closer to a bomb. And BAM! One more to go! Oh, then finally! So long, eh, Bowser? Oh, it was right there! So long, eh, Bowser? Yes! That's it. That is it! Finally! Three of the most grueling days of my life are over. I somehow managed to beat Super Mario 64 with only my elbows. Despite all the pain, despite all the suffering, I'm really glad I did this. I really was testing my limits and patience here, and I'm so glad that I was able to prevail for this challenge. Let me tell you, I wanted to quit so many times. I really wanted to quit, but I knew it'd be worth it in the end, and oh, it definitely was. 